And so I'd like to just go a little bit over that just so you get some sense for how this works. And so to really get into that, we can start talking about invasive testing and invasive monitoring. And really, um, as I mentioned before, when you talk about invasive monitoring, when we're talking about implanting electrodes in the brain, it's not necessarily that every patient gets that. Really what we do is we get all that non-invasive testing that we talked about, the MEG and the PET study and all those studies, and we look to see how much correlation is, is between those. Now, if you get all those different tests and everything points to the right temporal lobe, for instance, then that gives you a very high likelihood that the seizures are coming from the right temporal lobe and you don't need to go ahead and do additional invasive monitoring. You can often do a direct you know, surgery to treat that area. Separately, and, and really kind of the, the use for invasive monitoring is when you have multiple studies and they all point to different areas. So for instance, you may have a lesion on the right temporal lobe, your EEG may show left temporal onset, your SPECT study or MEG may show another area. And in those patients, then invasive monitoring is a much more important and, uh, and necessary thing. So as I mentioned before, there's two broad categories of epilepsy surgery. We have diagnostic procedures in which we implant electrodes, we're listening for seizures, we wait and detect where the seizures come from. Uh, and then we can go on to therapeutic surgeries and, and we can talk more about that in, in a little bit. So these are the two types of uh, procedures we talked about. So what you see on the left is a subdural grid. Now, what that entails is actually laying grids on, on the uh, surface of the brain, really looking for where those seizures are coming from. And then on the right, what you see is separate from that uh, SEEG. And those are pinhole openings that we make and we place these very thin uh, electrodes into the deep parts of the brain. Hey everyone, Ryan Rad here from neurosurgerytraining.org. If you like that video, subscribe and donate to keep our content available for medical students across the world.